Hey, hey, welcome for this new step of the tutorial series on how to build a to-do list DAP on Ethereum. So in the last step, we learned how to read smart contract data from the front end. And in this step, we're going to learn how to create some smart contract data from the front end. So we'll be able to create new tasks from the front end. Before we continue, I'd like to quickly show you the new ebook that I've released about this series. So it's basically, it takes all the steps that I've published on YouTube and on my website in the blogs, and I put them in a nicely formatted ebook available in PDF, EPUB, and Mobi format. So you can also read it on a Kindle, and you can pay by credit card or, or Ether. And it will also have two bonus chapters, one on how to continue this to-do list DAP with React and also another bonus chapter on how to integrate Drizzle. This being said, let's get started. So if you've been following this tutorial series for a while, uh, first you know that you have to set up the project. The first thing we'll do is to copy the folder of the last step and put it in a new folder that we'll call step eight. So you can get the, the code of the last step by going to the GitHub of it the blocks. And then we're going to do different things. First, you need to install the NPM dependencies. Then in a new terminal, we need to launch a local Ethereum blockchain with the Ganache CLI command. In another terminal, we'll need to run the Node.js server. So for that, you, you start the NPM run dev back command. And yet in another terminal, you need to start the Webpack Watcher with NPM run dev front. So just to recap, you should have created a total of three terminal windows, one for Ganache CLI, one for the Node.js server, and one for the Webpack server. Awesome, so you are ready to get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is to set up the HTML. So we will create a form to create new task. So for this, you're going to open our HTML file, so it's an app slash js slash index.html, and inside a div that has the class container at the very top, you will add this HTML. So for this, I go to the, um, to the article of this step on the website of in the blocks and I copy everything. And then I go back to my editor and I paste, paste this HTML. It's just an empty uh, HTML now. It doesn't actually create any task, but you can already check that it works. So by going into your browser by localhost column 3000, then you should see something like this. So you should see the new form to create task. All right, so that's a good first step, but of course we want to make the submit button work. So let's, let's go to the next step of this tutorial. So for this, we will need to attach an event handler to the submit button. And for this, we're going to use jQuery. So open the main JavaScript file, which is app slash js slash lib slash app.js. And in the setup method, you're going to add this snippet. So what are we doing here? So basically we are grabbing some DOM nodes with jQuery and these DOM nodes belong to the create task form that we've just added with the HTML. So first uh, we grab the submit button, a new task, and the two other one are the form element. So the content of the task and the author of the task. Then at the top of the init method, add this snippet. So when a user click on the submit button, we detect it thanks to the submit event and we trigger a function. So you probably know that this kind of function is called an event handler. We temporarily only put a console log statement just to make sure it works properly. So a word of caution for front-end beginner. The fact that the text of the button is submit has nothing to do with the naming of the submit event. So we could put whatever text we want in the button and we'll still be able to capture clicks with the submit event. So if you're experienced, like, I'm sorry, this is probably boring, but you know, we have to think uh, about everybody and, and there are also some beginner here. And now open your web browser and go to localhost semicolon 3000, so like before, and check that you in your dev console, you see the console log statement when you click on the submit button. So you should see this create task 
and if you do then it means that it works good we are making progress so next we need to actually trigger the creation of the task in the smart contract from our event handler because currently we're just console logging we're not doing anything but it's a little bit useless okay so for that we first we need to get the the address to send our transaction from so why why we need this because when we will create this task in our smart contract using ethereum concept it means that we will create a transaction and when you create a transaction in ethereum you always need to specify the from field of the transaction so which means uh, who is sending the transaction so first we need to know what is this address so next we need to get the address to send our transaction from just before continuing i'd like to clarify one thing so ethereum has the concept of accounts where each address has not only an associated balance but also some data each account is referenced by its address so we often use address and account interchangeably so if you hear me uh, talking of address or account i basically uh, mean the same thing so in previous episodes we already called smart contract functions without spending any ether it was because we did not modify data on the blockchain but we were just reading it this time it's a little bit different so we will call a function of our smart contract that actually modifies data on the blockchain and when we do this we need to pay some ether so don't panic we are just using a local ethereum blockchain with fake ether so you don't need to spend any money to follow this tutorial it's all good so in, in ethereum terms we will send to the blockchain a data structure called a transaction and the term transaction can be a little bit confusing here especially since ethereum is able to perform financial transactions so in this context a transaction is a sign message that says call this function in this smart contract and second if the execution result in any data changes persist them in the blockchain that's what an ethereum transaction means because transaction change data and cost money to the sender we need to make sure that the address owner actually send the transaction so you don't want to have like one of your enemy sending fake transaction and spending all your money and the ethereum network gladly accepting this fake transaction so that's why we need transactions to be signed but how do we sign a transaction with the private keys of your address so the local blockchain we use ganache li provide you with 10 pre-funded addresses as well as their private keys but actually we won't even need their private keys because when ganache cli runs normally it unlock these 10 accounts that it has created it means that we don't need to deal with signing this transaction so to send a transaction we only need to know the the from field the, the from which address we want to send it from and ganache cli will gladly mine the transaction without requiring any signature okay but first we need to let the front end know what is this address so the main javascript file app.js start to be a little bit beefy so we will create a new file to host the code that will get our address so we will call this file app slash js slash lib slash actions .js, and you will put this snippet inside so here we use web 3eth accounts to get a list of all the pre-funded accounts of ganache cli and we will return the first one note that we also transform the old school callback style to a more modern promise style so we're going to make use of our new function so in our main javascript file app.js we will call this in the setup function so first we need to add an import statement at the top of app.js so we'll import get account from actions then in the setup function you, you will replace this by this new written statement that make use of our new function 
All right, so now that the front end knows which address to send the transaction from, we are finally ready to create a task in our smart contract. So we will trigger the creation of a task in the smart contract from the event handler in the front end. So in app.js, replace this snippet by this one. So basically, we replace our console log statement with an actual API call to our smart contract. So we use the Truffle contract instance that we already created in previous episodes. So that's the, that's the to-do object. And this object has automatically created all the functions of our smart contract, but in JavaScript so that we can trigger the smart contract function very easily. So we just need to pass the parameter to the create task function and uh, the truffle contract will take care of communicating with the smart contract. You will notice that when we execute the create task transaction uh, function, we have to specify two parameters. So one is the from parameter. So as I said before, we need to specify the from, from which address we send a transaction. So that's the role of this parameter. And then there is another parameter called gas, which basically specify what is the maximum uh, execution cost of this transaction. So I, I haven't touched on gas so far and I will not explain gas in, in this series, but I will make another series on, on gas later. Uh, but just, uh, just, be, just be aware that you have to specify uh, what's the maximum amount of gas that you need to spend for a transaction. And now go to the front end of your DAP in your browser and create a task and check that you see this console log statement after you click on submit. So we are finally able to create some blockchain data from the front end and, and that's awesome. But the problem is we still cannot see it from the front end. So remember, in the last episode, we made a function that returned some dummy data to the front end. And that's currently what we see in the list of tasks. So we need to change that. So now what we want to do is to read the actual task of the smart contract, not some dummy task that we created just for testing purpose. So there are two approach for this. So the most simple will be to have a function in our smart contract that returns an array of our tasks. So that would be something like this. However, the problem with this is that our tasks are represented as structs. So that's the task struct. And currently in Solidity, it's not possible to return an array of structs. So we cannot use this approach. So another approach would be to return a tuple of arrays, each representing a field of our struct. So uh, for example, the first array will be an array of IDs, and then the second array will be an array of dates, etc., etc. So uh, if you want to, um, to extract a task from all these arrays, then you will take the first element of the uh, ID array then you will take the first element of the data, array, et cetera, et cetera, and then you will reconstruct a, a full task and you will need to do this for uh, all the tasks. However, if we take this approach, there's still another problem. In Solidity, it's not possible to return an array of string yet. So we cannot use this approach. So there is yet another approach and that's the, the approach that we will take. So basically it involves doing multiple calls instead of just one. So from the front end, first we will get the list of all the task IDs by calling get task IDs on the smart contract. Then we will get each task one by one by calling get task on the smart contract. So get task will just return a single task um, uh, matching a specific ID. So that's what we're going to do. So go back to the actions.js file and add this function get task with an S. 
And basically, this function is going to do exactly what I, I just explained. Um, so just um, just a word of explanation here. Yeah, so we make use of promise heavily here, and uh, we actually so first we call these get task IDs functions, and after we create an array of promise. So at this point, we're not calling the smart contract yet. We are just uh, building a different promise. And when, when we have all the promise, we finally trigger all of them. And, uh, and then finally, we can uh, use a then statement to collect all the, all the tasks. And, and the code that's going to use this function actually doesn't care that we are doing things in a, in a quite complex way. Uh, the, the complexity of the interaction between the front end and the smart contract is contained in this function. So it's not going to impact the rest of the code. So this is all good. And finally, we have to export this function. And then in app.js, import the new getTas function from action. We have to call this function inside the init function. And now you go into the front end of the DAP in your browser and you will need to create a few tasks and then you're going to reload the page and you should see that the tasks that you just created are showing in the list of tasks. Fantastic, you made it. So let's recap what we did so far. So we did two things. First, we add the possibility to create a new task from the front end. So we created the HTML and we connected this HTML to the backend and we learn how to send a transaction by specifying the from which address we want to send the transaction and also by specifying the gas parameter. And the second thing we did is that we replace the rendering of dummy data in the list of tasks by the rendering of actual task. And for that, we had to use a trick because we couldn't just query the smart contract for all the tasks, but we had to, to do this in two steps where first we query for all the IDs of the task and then we individually retrieve all of the tasks and after we collect everything, then we render it in our front end. That's unfortunate that we have to do this, but solidity is a little bit too limited at the moment and we have no other choice. So that's great and you've really learned a lot in this tutorial and in this series and it's not finished. We still have one missing feature. What we are missing is the ability to toggle the done status of a task. So if you remember in a smart contract, there is a done field in a task struct, but we're not making use of it. So we need to change this and that's what we're going to do in the next step of this series. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. And also if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye.